Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Seriously in Business podcast. I have an incredible guest to share with you today. And if you don't know Emily Osmond, you're going to be very, you're welcome for me sharing you with her. So Emily and I talk about a whole plethora of things all the way from Emily is a new mum. She's got about a 15 month old and we chat about motherhood and balancing that and the different decisions we have to make as business owners and what we want to prioritize in our businesses all the way through to marketing and from whether you are a new business owner and you're working out how to get your first few clients all the way to those of you who are scaling your business and you're working out how to build up your traffic and actually create more of a passive income. We talk about the different marketing challenges of those things. We talk about different things you want to be focusing on in those areas of your life. We talk about about, um, trends and predictions for 2024. There are so many different things we chat about, and I really think you'll love this episode. It is so beautiful, and I love this conversation with Emily so much. So I hope you love it. So if you don't know who Emily is, Emily is an online marketing strategist and educator whose work focuses on helping with one-person business owners to develop the marketing skills and confidence needed to reach more of the people they can help. She does this through her podcast, The Emily Osmond Show, which has listeners in more than 100 countries, and her events and her membership the Modern Marketing Collective, which has helped close to 1,000 business owners to grow an engaged audience, turn that interest into sales and to build a business that they are proud of. Emily has a Master of Communications degree and is a mum of her one-year-old son. And after growing up in England, she now lives in Melbourne, Australia. So thank you for joining me for this episode and let's dive in. Yay. Welcome, Emily, to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Jackie. I'm excited to chat with you. I am too. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm actually really, really excited for this conversation because I feel like it's going to be really helpful to a lot of my audience. Um, plus, I just, you're just really great to talk to and like, you've got this great voice and persona, so oh. I think it's going to be nice to listen to as well. Thank you. What a compliment <laughs> to kick this off. <laughs> oh, I know. I just got to gotta hype up my guests first. Um, okay. So the first question I ask everyone is mm. what does an average day in your life and business look like from like when you get up to when you mm. go to bed, how are you managing? I know that you've got a beautiful yeah. little one-year-old and yes. how that kind of all how does business work for you yeah. and how does life work for you? Yeah, absolutely. So yes, you're right. I have, uh, he's, what, what's the date? He's just turned 15 months, cool. a little boy called Lando. So um, that was quite a, just, gosh, there's a lot that changed that I learned from having uh, a little baby and a business. So we can tap into that a little bit more, but yeah. um, I guess that my average week, if I start there, so Lando at the minute does daycare three days a week. Although having said that, there's often a day that he might be sick or we might be away somewhere. So it doesn't always quite happen like that. Um, then the three days that I work. So uh, each week I normally will have a call with my membership. So that'd be like a workshop call. And you recently came in and did a masterclass with my students, which was so good, all about Canva. So it'll normally be one call a week doing that. Then um, a couple of hours a week, either recording my own podcast and having guests or being on other people's uh, podcasts. So normally they're kind of the live times that I have to show up. And then the rest of the week is very flexible. Although now that I do have less time that I want to be working because I do have my son and I, I want to be spending a few days with him, I am working at being a little bit more structured in those days. Previously, <laughs> I've been very much just like, I kind of do what I want when I want. And I think we have that luxury when we have our own business. But at the same time, there's also specific tasks that need to happen in my business. And I do feel as though it'll be more um, maybe a little bit less stressful for me to have specific times of the week that I'm actually doing those tasks. Um, so this morning, for instance, um, or today I've been working on a, um, bit of a sales funnel and creating a trip wire and an upsell, which I've actually never done in my business before. So I'm excited to see how those ones go. <laughs> Um, and then this afternoon I'll be jumping into the membership, seeing if there's any questions in there and that type of thing. So it kind of, um, uh, alternates to what I'm doing between the marketing side of my business, the delivery side. So with my membership and then also as well, the sales side. And at the moment I'm doing a Black Friday promotion. I've got a retreat coming up. I've got a day out coming up for solopreneurs to get together. And then I've got a couple of offers on my membership. So really just thinking about, cool, how am I marketing myself? What content am I putting out there? How am I delivering to my existing clients and customers? And then what am I doing to uh, boost revenue and, and turn some of that interest, some of that audience into potential clients as well. The, the constant, mm. the constant. The constant. Thing, oh my gosh. I feel like yes. doing that, like 
when you start your business, you're like, yeah, yeah I want to do X. Like I want to be a graphic designer or I want to yes. be a coach or I want to be. And it's like, well, now actually not, but half yes. of your time is going to be spent on marketing. Have fun yes. with that. <laughs> yes. Which, before we get into a little bit about. Well, because I actually started my business, Jackie, um, in the one-on-one client space. Yeah. So I did my first, what was it? Probably three years. Uh, I did run a few workshops, which were really great. I loved those um, on Instagram and content marketing. And then I also had clients. So I did some marketing strategy work. And then we also did, so I had some contractors. We did some brand design and website design and definitely doing that style of business. And I know that you've kind of got two sides to your business. I don't know if you see it that way. I don't know if I'm yeah, correct there, but I kind of see yeah. you've got the um, the studio side and then the digital product side. Yeah. And for me, from my experience, from those first few years of when I had more the service uh, business, I was definitely spending more time on the client delivery and managing my contractors and yeah. checking in on the designs and less time marketing because I guess there was only ever so many clients I could take on. It was only like two, three uh, you know, not a lot at a time. So I didn't need to be doing a whole lot of marketing. And um, whereas now that my business is really all digital product, definitely like it requires having more marketing, more presence out there because you need that bigger exposure and that bigger audience size and that bigger list size because the average transaction value is so much lower. For instance, like my membership is a 49 US dollar a month at the minute. So you need the volume for that. Um, but it does require, I guess it's less on the delivery side in comparison, but much more on the marketing side. And I think that's something just for aspiring online course creators to be aware of because it's it's it is a leveraged way to make money, but it's definitely not passive. Like you have to be marketing. <laughs> Yeah. What yep. have you found? <laughs> yeah. No, that was like the, the perfect summary of it. Like, I mean, mm. you, cause you're right. Like six, six years ago or so before I had yeah. the online course side of my business, it was definitely, yeah, mostly delivery. And like with that kind of work too, I do find there's a lot of word of mouth, like with my studio yes. right now, it's growing a lot through word of mouth, which is incredible. Yes. And so those things are really great because it does obviously take less effort to market. You just need yes. to make sure you're doing incredible client delivery. Mm-hmm. But yeah, once you start to kind of grow and you want to do the more passive side, then it's yeah. like, yeah, you've actually got to, you've got to continually have new people coming into your yes. world. You've got to continually be putting yourself out there. You've got to continually be somehow finding mm-hmm. people to come into your world. And so, yeah, yeah it really does. It, you're so right. It depends on that. And so I think right now mm-hmm. I'm feeling in my business, it's like, Oh, it's all marketing and or yeah right now it's a lot of setting up systems and stuff too but that's a yes. whole other thing yeah um yeah it's a whole yeah. other thing okay and so just to rewind back to that question um how mm. before you what what like what times yeah. are you working like are you starting like yes. at nine and finishing yeah. at five or you kind of like oh, on those good, days good obviously question. yeah so normally I'm at my desk around 10 a.m sometimes a little bit earlier so I drop um my son off like he's got really clingy lately Aww. so it's been really hard like all up till now because he started daycare probably around six or seven months for just a few hours a week and then I eased him into two days and now he does three days and he's been so easy and so happy but I think we were away a little bit over the last month and then he had he got sick so it's been very hard on me <laughs> dropping him off so yeah it's been a little bit later than normal because I'm like oh just give him a bit more time at home anyway yeah. probably all the parenting experts are like wrong approach Anyway, uh, so, but normally it's between nine and 10, I drop him off, get to my desk and then I work, I pick him up around four. Um, so I have kind of that time and then obviously take a little bit of a lunch break. Um, and then that's the three days a week that I do. So I, I kind of see it ends up being about 15 hours a week, but then that's doesn't always happen. Um, so the last month we were at my partner's family farm for two weeks for harvest. And yeah. so I didn't get a lot of that kind of dedicated time on the business. And I think it's been, yeah, definitely having my son and running my own business, I have found challenging the whole, like for many, many years, I have always had that desire to become a mum. And I set up my business with that in mind, really intentionally thinking about, okay, what's this going to look like if I am a mum? But I think you just never really know what it's like until it happens. Yeah, yeah. And the part, like the first year, um, the sleep deprivation was 
challenging. That was real, wasn't it? <laughs> oh gosh. And the brain capacity side of things, I oh. just felt very um yeah, it took my brain a lot longer to to get into work mode. I think because I was like parenting and figuring out how to be a mom and not getting a lot of sleep and all that yeah. type of and thing. And the first one is so hard because it's Ooh. like just oh my gosh. such a transition. Yes. Like, and I, I remember flipped. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it, it's just going from parenting, drop off at daycare, like the morning kind of like feeding him, changing him, nappy, get in there. And then I get back to my desk some days. I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I've done a day already. I haven't even started work. <laughs> Uh, uh, so yeah, yeah, it's been um it's been challenging. And I, I kind of just want to share that because it it can look easy from the outside and it can look like you kind of see other entrepreneurial women perhaps having their own businesses and it's like, oh my God, how did they do it? Make it like how how do they make it look so easy? But I found it challenging, even though I set this up with with motherhood in mind. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely challenging. I think all of the different seasons are so different. Like mm. one year old and the first kid is so different. So I'm assuming what's I'm assuming it's going to be different because I'm about to have my yes. second in in March. That that will be different again to what it was having another one. But again, like I'm still mm. going to have like, my daughter only goes. She gets looked after by my parents one day a week, and then next yes. year she'll be doing like three old kinder for two half days. And so like yes. I'm still barely anything. Yeah. And apart from this morning she was just playing incredibly like she was recently her birthday and she got all these new toys and so she was just sitting around playing by herself for like the whole yes. morning I was just in the kitchen table ticking away at a few things yeah. when she didn't need me uh, it was so helpful um I got her actually this is another tangent I got oh, yeah. her a little from Kmart there was like a little work from home set so there was like a little wooden is that the timber one I've seen that yeah. I'm like oh like looks- she was <laughs> so obsessed with it because both my husband and I work from home and so she's often seeing us on our laptops and it was a real yeah. it was a real scary mirror to be held up to us yeah. of like oh yeah. hold on I can't come help you with that because I'm working right now she would say to us and I'm like oh, oh. <laughs> but the things they pick up hey and you're like, it's oh, incredible wow. mm. anyway she she loves that set and so the, yeah. when she sees me working now she just goes gets out her thing and says oh mom I'm just oh. doing this on my computer I'm like okay that's great honey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway I thought that was a whole tangent <laughs> but you were saying setting up for your or prepare for your second child. Yeah. And so mm. I'm I'm assuming that's going to be a little bit easier because it's not going yeah. to be a total life shift, but yeah. also really tricky because again, that sleep de- deprivation will come yeah. back in the the mum brain and the mm. and the constant cuddles and all of those beautiful parts yeah. of it, but also the challenging parts when your brain is like, Yeah, I flip and love my work. Yes. And I also really love being a mum. Yes. And so working out that, like making sure that I'm mm-hmm. cherishing those mum moments instead of wishing mm-hmm. them away because like, oh, if she, once this kid is a little bit older, they'll be able to get babysat mm-hmm. a bit more or they'll be able yeah. to be lying down more and not be stuck on me. But it's like, <laughs> yes. we're going to get those moments back again. I want to cherish them when I set my I business know. up so I could do those things. And like, it's a whole, yeah. like, like even the other day on Miley's birthday, we were like, I want to, part of me, I only have one full day working a week and her birthday fell on that day. And I was like, every part of me wants to just continue with babysitting and just my work day. But I was like, this was the reason I set my business Mm. like 10 years ago when I started it. I, I, similar to you, I had this idea of like, I want to make sure it's like, I want it to work for my family. Yeah. Like if I just work on this day, then that was the whole reason I set it up was was so that I could take birthdays off. And yet here I am considering not. And so we ended up taking it off both my husband and and I, and we spent the day together and it was really lovely. And it was just this great reminder of what, like whether you're a parent or not, Mm -hmm. what are your priorities of setting up your business and making sure that you work towards that rather than just letting business take over of like, if it was to have flexibility, like it was to be able to catch up with friends who was able to travel. Are you doing those things? especially once your business is actually set mm-hmm. up and it is sustainable or are you just kind of being like, eh, business is important and fun. So yeah. I'm just going to keep on doing those things at the expense of the things that I actually set it up for. And you know, the other thing um, is I, I think it makes it, it just adds another layer or another dimension is that because we do typically as business owners have a lot of that flexibility, mm-hmm. I, I think that there's also maybe some of that guilt or self-questioning, or I've experienced that anyway, because I'm like, oh, I guess I could stay home with him and just try and work at night. Or I guess like maybe I could try and work one day or two days a week. Whereas if we were employed, it's like, no, you're coming back three Mm. days or four days or five days. And those are the days and those are the hours. And it almost takes that um, 
decision out of your hands. Yeah, exactly. Which in some ways perhaps makes Helpful. it a little easier. It's like, that's the, <laughs> that's just the way it works. Yeah, which you could ways- do literally anything like yeah. Never send your kid anywhere and just have them home 24 seven and work around them or send them to daycare five days a week. Yes. Like both options are totally There's no map to you. for it. Yeah. Exactly. And so I guess it's up to us to make the decisions, which sometimes can make us, or I found make me be like, oh gosh, you know, I'm making this choice to, to send him there. Is this the right thing? I don't know. It's a whole other dimension. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Like even this morning I was thinking like, I'm, I'm happy I'm not sending her to daycare that I can actually look after her, yeah. but at the same time, would she be better off at daycare right now instead of a mum that's <laughs> yeah. just sitting at the computer working the whole time? Yeah. Oh my gosh. But I don't, I don't think so because the I think challenges. she enjoys the, the, the play by herself and yeah. she gets so imaginative and it's beautiful. And so it's great. But I'm like, yeah, those questions always yeah. pop in your mind of like, is this the right thing? But I guess yeah. that the, the real answer is, is there's a thousand right things. Oh there's, gosh. There's no one right, perfect exactly. option. Exactly. As long as, as long as they're thriving and you're thriving, then that's the dream. That is our parenting advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. From two people that have no clue. <laughs> It's so, constantly Googling. What, take what you I want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just um, use remember that. Yes. <laughs> so you're obviously incredible at helping business owners to market themselves, which as we were talking about before is incredibly yeah, important, yeah. especially if you are in that. Okay. So it's important on two levels, particularly yeah. if you're, I think obviously the, the starting stage of a business, it's, it's really great to work on how, how the heck am I going to get my business out there? Yep. And it can be a really hard slog at that start bit. And then obviously there's continuing to get clients. Yes. And then there's that next stage of actually I want to scale and I want to grow yes. things. And that's in a whole other ballpark of finding yeah. clients and marketing and all those things as well. And so particularly for people that are mm-hmm. solo business owners mm-hmm. right now, they're, they're just one person, one woman shows. Mm-hmm. What are some really sustainable ways and really great ways that we can market our business to, to help to, whether we're in yeah. those early stages or we are in those scaling stages. Yeah, absolutely. So when, I guess when you are in more of the starting phases or in the phase where you're taking on clients and so there's there's a certain capacity that you can work to, it's, I think, important to keep in mind that you're, that's your business model. And I think there's so much noise and it's so easy to look at other people online and think, well, they're putting out so much content or they have a podcast and a YouTube and, and this type of thing, or they have thousands and thousands of followers. But it's important to kind of just be realistic. Well, how many clients do you actually need per month or per year? Is that 20 clients a year? And I really encourage people to focus on that. Like, okay, let's get really, really clear and specific here. Like what numbers do you need to bring into your business? What does that look like for you? And then really when you are in that type of um, business model, a lot of your marketing I see is there to help people feel really comfortable and excited to go ahead and work with you. So a lot of it, like you said, Jackie, with your um, studio business, and I know from my previous business, was from that word of mouth referrals, and then also from content to a degree as well. But also the content is helping people feel like you're like we're credible, like we know what we're talking about, that we understand them and that we're really connecting with their problems and their desires. And so I really see it as being your marketing is there for people in that consideration phase. So we want to look at how are we showing that we are, that we know what we're talking about. Maybe that's serving uh, people with some of that value. Maybe it's sharing some case studies or some wins or some testimonials to show what results we've helped other people get. And also showing a bit of our own personality too, just bringing that through, showing the human behind the business. I think that's something, well, I see with a lot of the women and business owners I work with that there's like a really big fear of doing that. And I know when we've come from perhaps working in a more corporate space where There's not a lot of really that personal branding being done and we're working under the company. When we then step out to own our own business, it can feel really exposed when we are putting ourselves out there and putting our own voice out there. But as service providers and online experts, that is what helps us stand out is sharing our own perspectives, our own experiences, and it helps our content be unique as well versus just sharing the, you know, these are kind of the generic tips that any business can share. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yes. To all of that. That was such great advice from it. Like 
the, the two sides that you gave us there mm. of, 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 of that idea of, yeah, actually you don't, you don't need to be doing all of the things. And honestly, that probably won't serve you at all. It's more mm. like, say for me, like if someone was to look at my business from there, we're starting out, it's like, yes. oh, she has a podcast. She has a YouTube channel. She has a studio. She has an online course. She has a coaching thing. It's like, yeah, I, I've been in my business for 10 years now. Like that's yes. why I've got those things. that's built up like one or two things every year or two. Yeah. And then I've culled other things because other things have taken priority. And so there's this slow growth that happens. And so what do you need at this point? Yeah. How many clients do you need? How many customers do you mm-hmm. want? And what are the things that are going to help you get to that rather than taking all your time and I guess yeah. being a shiny fun thing to work on for a moment, which then gets boring. And then you realize it doesn't actually help your business grow and on that, on that too, Jackie. So I do something called the 2k challenge, which is yeah. for my new members, but really the idea of that is to get them out of the, I guess, marketing for the sake of marketing and actually looking at what is the di- most direct way for you to get your first clients or get your next clients. And if you're new in business, often that is doing the outreach, introducing yourself, attending networking events, getting in front of people. And if you already have some clients, often the quickest way is to go back and see how you can further serve those clients. And I think that we can fall into the trap of being more passive because it feels a lot safer when we're sitting behind our computer or our phone and sharing a post. And yes, there's a role for that. I teach that as well. But really often the most quick and direct way to generate revenue in your business, which especially if you're starting out is really that key goal to get yourself up and running, is to look at well, how, how can you actually make a contact with someone one-on-one? How can you meet someone? And from there, the referrals will start coming in because like you then, let's say I met you in an event. It's like, oh my gosh, now anyone I know that needs some help with their design, I'm going to send to you. So it's really such a powerful way, um, but it can feel more uncomfortable because it is putting ourselves out there. <laughs> yeah. And you can get like a no and no, yes. and no is scary. Yes. But if you just do a post and not many people reply or no one replies yes. and, oh, well, no one really saw it. That's fine. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, 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 I totally agree with that because mm. it's, and yeah, that's the scary side. And it's, but if you actually are thinking strategically of how can I, yeah. who is someone that I would love to work with? Why don't I just yes. ask them if they would like to work with me? Or even like asking a past client, do you have anyone that you could refer yes. me to? Like, you don't even have to offer them money for that. Like, I've done that in the past. And yes. like, you, you think that you need to give them some massive discount or some yes. massive thing. And it's like, people are actually nice and they want to yeah. support you. And so, like, yeah, awesome. And just, people love to be helpful, don't they? Like if someone was yeah. to say to me, Emily, do you know anyone that does this? I I, would, I always want to try and help. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's really important. And I think as well, um, ways to do that is uh, being part of communities and attending events where possible, because they're just like, kind of like um, speed up the way that you get to meet people and connect with people and then be front of mind when um, they know people that are looking for your services. So yeah, yeah. exactly. And you're like, you don't have to go to those events with like 20 business yes. cards and be like, yes. salesy, salesy, salesy. It's just, yes. hi, what do you do? Oh, I do that too. Oh, exactly. Cool. Sounds fun. How do you find your business? Oh, good. What have you been learning? Like just actually talk to them yes. as a human being. And yes. that's, yeah, it forms like such deep connections. The next minute mm-hmm. Instagram besties and then this they're showing the you on their stories yes. and then you've got a whole community. Yes. And then when they refer to you, people are probably going to look at your Instagram and or whatever your core platform is and your website. And so that's where you just want to make sure you've got like a nice clear message on there. You talk about what you offer, you talk about the problems you solve. So I would say they're kind of like how to get started with your business. (laughs) Yeah. I just wanted to interrupt for a moment to say that if you're enjoying this episode, I would love to invite you to my free three-part video training to help you to create your own stunning visual brand, helping you to grow your business faster and to feel and look a million bucks. If you're ready for the best year of business yet, then join over 1,000 business owners who have already taken part in the challenge to get started on creating your own brand. Join us today at whitedeer.com.au forward slash challenge. That's the color white, the animal deer.com.au forward slash challenge. Cannot wait to see you there. Let's get back to the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. And, and that's where it does come down to. Like so many yeah. people are like, oh, I'm just starting out my business. I don't need a great design or I don't need a great this and yeah. that. I'm like, great design and and messaging yes. are really important. They usually come hand in hand. Like you can't have a good design if you don't know what your message is because yeah. your design is just going to look pretty and not actually connect with people. And it's like, how can you, you, you they, unless someone is literally hearing about you and then calling you, they're going to be seeing something of you. They're going to yes, be stalking your website exactly. or stalking your Instagram or stalking your Facebook page or whatever your platform is. 
And so just making sure that that backs up the message that actually shares how you can work with me and why you would want to do that and and making that super clear rather than, oh, I don't really want to work with that person because yeah. that doesn't make any sense to me or that doesn't resonate with me yes. or this they look or way too just cheap unclear. or they look too expensive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Clarity is such an important thing. And it's, it's hard as a business owner to do that because oh my gosh. your business makes sense in your own mind. It's the hardest to do it for your own business, for sure. <laughs> is there, do you have any like tips for like how we can, yeah. I guess, put on maybe someone else's shoes and someone yeah. else's perspective to create something that makes sense to people and is actually going to draw them in? Yeah. I, something I do with my students is I get them to think about really simply like what what are you helping people with? Who are you helping? What's the problem you're solving? And often we seem to overcomplicate it a lot. And so I really encourage people to like, it, maybe you just need to write down on a page, like just how succinct and simple can you make this? Um, and it doesn't need to be really sophisticated or fancy or clever because when we do those things and use our own maybe jargon or industry jargon, we lose more and more people. Um, I have uh, one of my students is a SEO designer and I think her message is something like turning um, like your website visitors into buyers. And so that is I like that. really, yeah, I want, exactly. I want that. <laughs> I understand what that is. It's really, really simple and really, really clear. And then you can use your sub messaging. So kind of underneath that core message to maybe explain a little bit further how you do this or exactly who it's for, or, but really just like, how simple can you make it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, fancy and clever doesn't really work for that core message because you don't want people to feel confu- confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is such mm-hmm. great piece of advice. And I think sometimes too we we get stuck in this idea that I, I need to be doing something that's totally different and groundbreaking yes. oh and wild and it's like, no, you don't actually need to. Like I think that's pretty sometimes more the case for product products, yes. like maybe even, but then again, like if you market a, a, like a yeah. – a pencil case fine then it's gonna sell you know and so yeah it's more about you're gonna explain this better what do you think it's like <laughs> why is it more important to focus on an actual that that clarity yeah. piece rather than trying to do something fancy mm-hmm. and, and and different and groundbreaking yeah yeah because it, it might make sense in your head right, let's try and do an example here so it might mm. be let's say you're a health coach so you might say I help people I help women take the crap their power and claim their space. Okay. Now I wouldn't really recommend that because to me, I, I'm sitting here with no idea what that means. So that's when I kind of go into, well, what does claim, what did I actually say? Like claim back your power? <laughs> Take yep. your power. Like what Something does that, like that mean? And that's what I prompt people, you know, what does that actually mean? Does that mean feel more confident at work? Does that mean put their health first? Like, what yeah. does that actually mean? Let's get more specific there um, and take up space. Like, again, I don't really know what that means. Does that mean walk into a room and actually feel confident talking to someone? Like, how specific can we get here? Because when we use wishy-washy language, you're really going to be overlooked for the person that's just much more um, direct and clear. And again, like, if we look at the referral side of things and we met someone at an event and they're like, hey, I'm a I'm a health coach or a life coach and I help people take up space. It's like, oh, like, great. Okay. <laughs> Whereas what does if that you actually mean? <laughs> yeah. How are you, yeah. What are you actually going to help I'm still not quite with? sure yeah. what, what I would refer you, to you for. Yeah. And it's the same thing probably that you're delivering, but just thinking about like how specific can you get there? Is it that you actually help people um, advance in their career? Mm. Take that next position. It put their like get out of the house every day for a walk. Like, how specific can you get there? Specific specific specificity sells. <laughs> Vagueness really loses people. Yeah. 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 I yeah. I I'm a real like stickler for like clarity and stuff. So this is like yeah. this is this is this is hitting the mark. So <laughs> thank you for sharing. Um. Yeah. Okay. And it. What are some other mistakes yeah. you might see small business owners making yeah. as they try market their business? We've broken to a few different ones. You, is there Are there any others you can think of that you see quite regularly? Yeah, yeah. Well, shall we go to the scale side of things as well? Sure. Because I know yeah, we're talking about, it. okay, yeah. well, what are some good things to think about when maybe in that more st- establishment stage? Yeah. And then really, like, this might sound odd perhaps, but... Um, if, if you have a service that people really need, 
then you like, I really believe if you can get yourself out there and get yourself connected, you will start having clients coming in. Now, when it comes to then getting to a point where you're like, hey, I really want to have something that perhaps isn't quite as tied up to my time, or maybe you're not really looking at going down the um, hiring staff or contractors side of things, um, or maybe even you are in like your business, Jackie, you've got the studio and then you've got the digital product side. Then like we kind of touched on it earlier in this episode, it really does come down to the marketing and the volume. And so let's say there might be, um, if you're in more the service side of um, spaces, you will probably find a pretty high conversion rate when it comes to inquiries and then clients. So you might have, let's say, maybe five people inquire, maybe you get a couple of them as clients. It's going to differ for every business and whatever it is that you offer. Now, when it comes to the digital product side of things, you, you're not really typically going to see, let's say, five people inquire or five people visit your page and three people buy. Like that would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but especially as those numbers grow, let's say you have 500 people visit um, a certain page, it, it's generally not going to see 50% of them go ahead and buy straight away. Um, so something, one of the mistakes that I see people making, which I just want them to know it, it's not them, is they think, well, I've created this course or this membership or templates or whatever it might be, and I've put it out there, but no one wants it. Mm. And typically it's not that no one wants it. It's just you're not getting it in front of enough people. Yeah. And it, it's a yeah. matter of, well, you really need the volume for that. And I think that's, it's a huge, it's like it really is a different way of marketing, versus the more one-on-one -on -one type of work where you can generate um, typically per client transaction, it's a nice hefty sum you should be able to generate there. Again, depending on what you sell. When it comes to the digital product space, yeah, you can certainly sell masterminds or more high-level courses for whatever it is that you want to sell them for. Um, but a lot of other products might be for less than $100 or 100 to 200 or 500 or whatever it might be. So if you're looking at generating the same amount of money or more amount of money through that side of business as your client work, you just got to remember that it's going to take more volume um, and that, like, how do you create that volume through a lot of organic traffic? And also you can do that through paid ads as well. So it, it's just kind of understanding that you need to put time and focus and attention into that um, to really build that up. What have you found, Jackie? Like, have you found yeah. that to be something that surprised you or what have you? Yeah, I don't know. What have you yeah, found? Yeah, no, I, I like this was, I guess this is probably a piece of advice that I would have done well to yeah. hear. Yes. <laughs> my first my, my, my first launch of my course went really well because I did have, because I'd never sold a digital product. Yes. So I did have that audience there. But the second launch did not go well because I'd already yeah. used up all my audience and I hadn't got heaps of new people yes. in. And I remember I did a course um, when I was pregnant with my daughter of like, all right, I'm going to try to put my course onto Evergreen and do this. And they kept on saying to me, Jackie, you need at least a hundred people through like a, yeah. in X amount of days. And I was like, I can't, I can't get that. That's too many people, like a hundred people, new people yeah. through my funnel. Like this is wild. I'm starting to get that now. But back then I was like, yeah. How come I'm, this isn't working? How come yeah. I'm not making like you, you? This course had promised me big dreams of like yeah. get to like retire my husband and do all these incredible yeah. things, and I'm like, well, I don't see that happening. And like, it's because of your traffic. And I was like, yes. well, that's a sucky answer because that means yes. a lot more work for me. And it's yes. taken years for me to better than build up that traffic, mm -hmm. especially with being a mum of like, right, I'm going to start my YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm going to push into my podcast. I'm going to pay a lot of money for yes. ads. Yes. And it, it all, it all kind of adds up to building that thing because yeah, at the start, yeah, used to that high conversion rate. And that's, and that's really great because it'd be sucky yes. if, if their conversion rate yes. for service stuff was similar to what it is for like a digital yeah. product. But yeah, no, I totally see that that's, that's, that's how it's played out think, in my business. Yeah. And I think like, go for it, everyone go for it, but also have this understanding too, of what is it you love? And I've seen some of my students that like love the marketing. They do pretty well with the online because they love like yeah. tinkering around with the ads or generating that content and that type of thing. But those that really feel yeah they don't want to spend all their time or most of their time with the marketing then maybe it's not for them mm -hmm. as much and they can have a wonderful business that maybe isn't as reliant on that volume side of things yeah you can have a really successful mm -hmm. business and yeah. just do one-on-one -on -one work and just do mm -hmm. client work and that's yeah like do that especially if you love the client work for me yes. I started to get I started to not love the client work as much yeah. and I literally couldn't do it because I had a child I was looking after 90% of the time. So that's why <laughs> yes. the switch had to happen. But for, for 
other people, then if you love mm-hmm. that work, like there's no need to think, oh, wow, I could be earning X yeah. amount of dollars by if I launch this online course. Like you could, yeah, but it's yeah. likely going to be a, a long journey and take a lot of your time and probably a little bit of frustration and heartache at the same time, because you're going to be investing a lot of time for a long time yeah. and probably not seeing a huge amount of results straight away. Mm-hmm. doesn't mean you won't get there. It'll be incredible when you do. Um, but yeah, knowing that what, yeah, I guess going back yeah. to that initial thing we were talking about is what is your priority? Yeah. Um, is it to, why do you want, why, why are you starting your business? And do you love, mm. that's a great question of, do you love marketing? And I love marketing. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of, it, it kind Me of works. <laughs> whereas, whereas for some people it's like, the, that they're like, yeah. no, I hate marketing. I don't want to yeah. show my face. I don't want to create the graphics. I don't want to talk. I don't want to do those things. And be so, consistent with some sort of channel, maybe podcast, everything. YouTube, whatever it might be, vlogging, yep. all of that. It just yep. requires more from that side of things. And I think like for, for me going into 2024, um, I think my word of the year yet to be confirmed <laughs> is going to be diversification. So okay. I've really, for the last few years, my like almost sole product um, or really the core product has been my membership. And that's been for about five and a half years. Wow. And I've seen a lot of change in the industry and in that space, like the online course and membership space and in the traffic side of space, um, quite a lot of change over those years. And so for me, I'm really looking at, cool, how else can I, um, what other products can I have in my business? How can I diversify my products and also my traffic channels? I've probably been Mm -hmm. a little reliant (laughs) on um, just a couple of them like mostly Instagram um, ads for a while, although then I kind of wound down them. I'm getting back into them a little bit more um, and podcasts, but I'm looking at what are some other places I can get my business out there. Um, And I think that it, it could be just maybe a prompt for other people too, to think about and like we just spoke about the online course and, um, and the service business, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a choice. If you can make it work with both, you kind of get a nice, um, you kind of get to have a little bit of each Best and of maybe cover yourself exactly when one part's going really well, other parts quieter, that type of thing. Um, yeah. And as needs and markets and the world changes. So, yeah, I think that that might be something we also see a little bit in the online space, um, just people diversifying a little bit more, maybe adding in some more of the one-on-one or some of the service work, um, just just a little crystal ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was Prediction actually gonna, I have. <laughs> I was going to ask you, that was one of my questions of what, yeah. what do you foresee as like some of the marketing yeah. trends or the mm. way that marketing might evolve in 2024? Is that yeah. one of your main thoughts or do you have a couple others? Yeah. I've, so I've seen, let's say Instagram and I'm, I'm sure you've perhaps seen, well, maybe, maybe not. It's be interesting to chat about um, certain changes. So I've been on Instagram like many years um, and definitely seeing um, a change in the people's attention and engagement and reach. So back like, let's say, five, oh, how long have I had my business? Probably about eight years. Um, the algorithm was in uh chronological order kind oh, of reverse yeah. like the most recent post would come up the top and you would yeah. see a lot of the posts of from the people you follow nowadays like you see barely anyone that you follow their posts so it's being like really intentional about the content that you do put out there that there's a purpose behind it try as much as you can to engage with other accounts and bring engagement on your content um, and use your things like your stories as well. Like, don't be afraid to promote, to pr- promote your offers as well and link off to them. Um, but yeah, I think something that we're seeing is in the past, I think when an offer was put out there, people would jump and go ahead and do it. And I think more and more, we're a little bit more distracted. We've got more tabs open. We've got more things like just volume of content. So I think finding ways that we can remind people, um, like I, I'm promoting a event for next year and I had someone like comment on one of my posts. Oh my gosh, I really need to get my ticket. And I'm like, do you want me just to direct message you the direct link? She's like, mm. that would be amazing. So just, like, that's just a small example, but just thinking about how can we make this really, really easy and also give people lots of reminders because not everyone's going to see all our content. They never have. Um, but just remembering like to you, it might feel like you're over marketing something, um, but people are not going to see 
all of that content that you're putting out there. So keeping that one in mind too. Um, And I think as well, like I was reading a report for predictions, 2024 marketing type of things. And they were talking about even with the larger companies, um, the, the kind of leaders of those companies are going to be more and more so like sharing their own content on LinkedIn and that type of thing putting out their own more personal brand and sharing their own perspectives. And this has been something as small business owners, sole traders that we've really had as such an advantage for us. And so if we're not doing this already, I think the fact that some of those bigger companies are going to start apparently or supposedly this is a trend coming out of their leaders getting more out there and building some personal brand, then I think it's another reminder to us that this is something that is so powerful and something something that can work. And I think that if you're marketing... And you really could switch the name at the top of your account and the content could belong to another business because there's no real personality. There's no real sense of connection. There's nothing that makes your business unique. Then you're like, you're really not going to get engagement or traction. It's going to be very, very hard. Yeah. Cause it's so much harder to comment on someone's post. If you don't really know who you're talking to yeah. when that post has been happening. And like, usually like faceless brands will get like friends tag, like you'll tag your friend in yeah. something. She's like, Oh, yeah. this product is cool. But beyond that, it's not, it's, yeah. it's far less yeah, personal. So yeah. I know the bigger corporations must be, they must know that it's worthwhile yes. and they're, they're seeing the small businesses do it. And so yes. yeah, it's a great reminder for us to keep pushing into that mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. That's so true. It's an interesting, interesting landscape. And it is. It is. ever changing and yeah. Yeah, but knowing that the key things of marketing remain the same of like knowing yes. your message and yes. and sharing that clearly and sharing your offers and like, yeah, that whole point of people not seeing your stuff is like oh my god, it's just constant reminder in my in my brain whenever I'm in a launch of like no, I'm sharing way too much. I need to stop. I need to calm down. I uh, there, there was one person. Sometimes I do follow I follow up people. I'm like, oh, would you love to yeah. join my course? If there's someone that's interacted before and there's someone that yeah. I know will be great for them, and then I messaged someone once and she was like oh, that sounds really great. I'd love to join, but I haven't seen anything about that. I'm like, yes. I've been launching this solid for two weeks and you haven't <laughs> seen a thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. and she might have seen a thing, but it doesn't mean that that's going to actually connect with her brain of mm. this is something that is actually useful for me. Yes. So continually sharing your offer, sharing it in different ways, yes. sharing it in different platforms, like, and sharing it over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, even if you get permission as well, like if, if you say, Hey, I can send you the link, if you'd like yeah. it, let me know, even just doing that is a good way. And then you can follow up and just be like, Hey, let me know if you want this, just yeah. finding ways that you can yeah, be helpful and um, stay front of mind. Cause we all know it's so easy to forget about things. And, um, and yeah, it's so interesting during launches as well, how we feel as though, gosh, I've talked about this so much. And then we get someone that's like, Oh, it, yeah, they just haven't even seen anything and we've got to remember that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not the most oh, important thing in everyone else's life no. as we are in our own life. Yes, <laughs> And exactly. that idea of staying front of mind I think is important yeah. too because like, I have a shocking memory for business names. Like yeah. I don't remember your business name. I can tell you yeah. what your, your profile picture looks like, yes. but I can't tell you what your business name is. Yeah. And so like if I've seen something that you're offering, I'm like, oh, I really should act on that at some point. Yeah. I literally can't go in and search for your name to then go act on it because <laughs> I've forgotten <laughs> what your name is. It's an annoying trait. But anyway, for what I'm relying on is the next time that I see you on Instagram, like, oh, yeah, that's a person I was going to follow or that's a person I was going to buy this thing from. And so the fact that you're posting or at least sharing something regularly means that you're back at the front of my mind and I can see it. Like Exactly. Yeah. And it really is that repetition. Yeah. I know when I'm, um, I've maybe visited a website and then I get the retargeting ads. Yeah. I'm much more likely to go back and buy that thing. Cause I'm like, maybe I do need that. Maybe I do want that <laughs> thing. And they just keep following you until you decide like, yep. yeah, maybe. It's like, go away. Fine. I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we want to be like retargeting, retargeting our audience um, organically, but we can also look at ads to do that yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Wherever yeah. your business is sitting, try it, try the things and see, see how, yeah. see how it works. And yeah. You know that traffic and levels are important as well. <laughs> Yes. Yes. You know, every time I put money towards ads, I'm like, it's okay, Jackie. Volume, volume, yeah. volume. Yeah. 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 And you need, like, obviously you need to have that revenue being generated to be able to afford to then invest the money in the ads too. And I guess I'm a big fan of um, the evergreen model of things too, because I like to be able to see a direct return from my ads versus mm. And there's, again, no one right way. This isn't going to work for everyone. Um, But I like to have, they're called more evergreen style funnels set up so that each month I can see, right, how many leads did I get? 
How did they convert? What do I need to change over time so I can constantly be refining and working on things versus, I guess, relying all in on the launch like once, twice a year? It just feels yeah, like, it's like oh, very that didn't work, but then it's probably going to change by the time I'm launching again. So yes. I can't really yes. work on that as easily. Yeah, no, I, I love the evergreen side too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of fun tw- tinkering around. <laughs> it is. So much, so <laughs> Looking much at like the stats. Yeah, I'm in a stage right now and I'm like, okay, there's this I need to tweak and there's so many things I want to tweak yeah. now. I'm like, I don't have time to do all the tweaks, yeah. but at, yeah. least it's, at least it's doing something good. Yeah, yeah. All right, great conversation. How can we like keep in touch with you or connect with you? Obviously, Instagram would be a great place to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So just my name, really, yeah. everywhere. My website, Emily Osmond, Instagram, Emily Osmond, podcast, The Emily Osmond Show. Oh, and um, yeah, well, easy, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully you can remember my name sometimes I find the business names I don't remember but the the names I do but um and then um I've got a free guide as well if anyone wants to just work on building that connection with their audience we've spoken about it's like really important to be able to do that um so you can get that at emilyosmond.com forward slash free Yay, amazing. And Emily's website's beautiful. So if you just want some inspiration, go and have a look, see. Um, I'm about to relaunch mine. In fact, it probably will be relaunched by the time that I, by the time this podcast is out, hopefully. So feel free to have checked mine out too for those listening. I can't wait to see. Oh, your graphics. So, so stunning. I don't think it'll be quite as pretty as yours, but it'll be hopefully, hopefully at least getting to being on par, maybe. Oh, Jackie. No, before we hit record, I'm like, Jackie, is your background real? Like, it just looks so amazing. You're like, yeah, it's real. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I've just slowly added to it. I'm like, Oops, my deer's falling over. Like, should I just oh, put my deer here? Like, is that deer, where that should go? Absolutely, your deer there. Yes. Yeah. Because it used to be up higher and it wasn't in view. And I was like, why am I not sure putting it? Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Thank you for joining so me today, oh, Emily. Such a pleasure. It's been so great to chat. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us. So thank you for joining us for that episode. I hope you loved the conversation just as much as I did. Um, make sure you get in touch with Emily. She um, has a plethora of knowledge to share. And yeah. I hope that you absolutely love what she has to share. And thank you so much for being here. If you want to leave a podcast review or say hi, please make sure you say hi on Instagram or even just jump over to iTunes or Spotify and and leave a review there. That will help more people to discover the podcast and be helped by hopefully the incredible content. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week for another episode. Bye. 